The Rise and Fall of Marcus Junius Brutus by Caitlin Bryant and Heidi Price. The crushing weight of Julius Caesar's death on the Roman Republic was the end of societal balance for Rome itself. So what was the motive behind this murder? The motive starts with a young boy, Marcus Junius Brutus, who was a native to Rome and grew up in a broken household. A young boy who never knew what it was like to have a father in his life. A young boy who was raised in a high societal home standard and who knew what it was like to have enemies. Enemies such as Julius Caesar, who had differentiating beliefs on how the Roman Empire should be run and controlled. Julius Caesar's idea was to turn the Roman Empire into a dictatorship and to declare himself as dictator for life. To elaborate, Julius Caesar saw his political views as correct. Meanwhile, Marcus Junius Brutus disagreed, along with the Senate, because he still supported the conservative side of politics. This brought along the first altercation that would soon lead to tragedy between the two opponents. Marcus Junius Brutus and Julius Caesar's relationship started in Marcus' childhood, when Caesar had an affair with Marcus' mother, Servilia. This caused Caesar to have a soft spot in his heart when in time to come, he finds him captured during the defeat of Pompey at the Battle of Pharsalus. Because of the previous, Brutus was pardoned by Caesar and was appointed city praetor, a high-ranking magistrate. Marcus Junius Brutus was awestruck when Julius Caesar declared himself as perpetual dictator in early of 44 BC. The difference between a republic and an empire is the loyalty of one's army. Julius Caesar. Marcus was aware of his conscious descent from Lucius Junius Brutus, who had driven away the Etruscan kings from Rome. Remembering this descent, he joined Sasius and other leading senators in the plot to kill Caesar on March of 15, 44 BCE. The origin of society then is to be sought in not any natural right which one man has to exercise authority over another but in the united consent of those who associate. Marcus Junius Brutus. The plan. The senators, also known as the conspirators, never met openly, but congregated in each other's homes. They discussed things such as proposals and where the execution would take place. Some thought the assassination should be done along the sacred way, where others believed it should be done at the elections. Another way to execute the plan was to wait for the gladiator show, because no suspicion would be aroused if arms were seen prepared for the attempt. Lastly, but favored by most, was to kill Caesar in the Senate, where he would be by himself since non-senators would not be admitted, and the conspirators could hide their daggers beneath their togas. Majority rules. On March of 15, 44 BCE, the plan was going into action, but they had one problem. Many people had heard gossip of the assassination and warned Caesar not to go. It was up to Marcus Junius Brutus, considered a close friend of Caesar, who said to him, What is this, Caesar? Are you a man to pay attention to a woman's dreams in the idle gossip of stupid men? And to insult the Senate by not going out, although it has honored you and has been specially summoned by you. But listen to me. Cast aside the forebodings of all these people, and come. The Senate has been in session, waiting for you since early this morning. This swayed Caesar, and he left, ignoring many bad omens. Caesar entered the house and took his seat as the conspirators gathered around him, as if they were trying to pay their respects when one of the main people involved in the plan, Tilius Simber, came near Caesar as if he was asking a question. Tilius Simber, remembering that his brother was exiled by Caesar, approached him and grasped the mantle of his toga. With this, Caesar cried, Why this violence? The men then jumped and stabbed Caesar just below the throat. He was stabbed with three, then twenty wounds, uttering not a word, but a groan at the first stroke. When Marcus rushed at him, Caesar is believed to have said in Greek, You too, my child? Marcus Junius Brutus had said, I have not come to praise Caesar, but to bury him. By murdering Caesar, Brutus had shown the courage of a man in the brains of a child. He acted out of idealism, even though he would have preferred being Caesar's friend. But killing Caesar did not mean that the Republic was restored. 
The city did not rejoice in the assassination, and the murderers were forced to flee the capital, where they would be safe, at least for a while. In Caesar's absence, Mark Antony took control of the Republic. He made a compromise with the murderers. They were to receive amnesty, while Caesar's acts were to be respected. And he would be worshipped as a god. Caesar's corpse was burned on 20 March on the Forum. The Roman mob saw the bloodstained cloak and heard of the money that they were to be given. Mark Antony spoke at the funeral and only inflamed the citizens more. Brutus and the other murderers had to escape from the city in which they wished to liberate. This was the start of war. Brutus went to the small eastern province that he had been assigned to, Crete. Mark Antony lost control of Rome after realizing that Caesar had left three quarters of his estate to his great nephew, Octavian, whom he had adopted as a son. This meant that Octavian could use the magical name of Julius Caesar. I found Rome a city of bricks and left it a city of marble, Augustus Caesar. Soldiers were enthusiastic and loved Octavian, for they were the only ones who seemed to notice the boy. Veterans of the legions 7 and 8 joined him. Two legions of Mark Antony, called Marcia, and the 4th Macedonia sided with him as well. At the beginning of 43, Mark Antony and Octavian were involved in a civil war which accumulated in the Battle of Mutina on April of 43. The conflict brought along a new chance for Brutus and Sasius, one of the other senators, to raise a large army in the east, which they hoped to use to liberate Italy from Octavian's control. Towns that did not side with Brutus's army were immediately destroyed. Meanwhile, the Senate was forced to come to terms with a young Caesar, Octavian. While controlling the city, Octavian declared Mark Antony's compromise as illegal and outlawed, the murders of his father. Then, unexpectedly, Octavian signed a peace treaty with Mark Antony as Octavian learned it would be impossible to defeat him as he still controlled Hispania and Gaul and was an excellent general. Octavian also knew that they could defeat the Republic together if they could manage to defeat the murderers. Octavian combined his and Mark Antony's troops and together they defeated Sasius and Brutus's outnumbered army at the Battle of Philippi in October of 42 BC. This caused tragedy to occur for Brutus after the battle as he knew defeat was near. Rather than to get captured after the defeat, Brutus elected to instead commit suicide. He did this by running into a sword being held up by his own men. The senators were defeated. It is easier to find men who will volunteer to die than to find those who are willing to endure pain with patience. Julius Caesar Brutus believed that he was acting out of honor to defeat a tyrant of Rome, but instead the death of Julius Caesar had the opposite impact of what the liberators hoped for. Due to the assassination, the majority of the public hated the senators, and long series of civil wars ensued. In the end, Caesar's nephew, Octavian, emerged as Rome's leader. He renamed himself Caesar Augustus. This was the end of the Roman Republic and the start of the Roman Empire. Though Julius Caesar may have had triumphs as a leader in Rome, he perished tragically from the trust of his own senators. Thank you to these sites for providing us with useful information that was crucial to putting together our documentary.